Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Jesus. We're excited for you to be here. I'm so glad to see you uh, and those wonderful folks online that have joined us. Um, one in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good to see you guys. And uh, I know you've been bunking a lot at church, but <laughs> and it's good to see you guys online. You know, when you when we weren't able, uh, Brendan and I had we had the COVID eh? uh, six weeks ago. Thank God we recovered. We actually didn't know we had it, but only when after Brenda recovered and went to see the doctor, she said, "No, no, you guys had COVID. You had all the symptoms, or most of the symptoms, anyway." Um, it was the worst flu I've ever faced. But thank God we have the victory through Jesus Christ. Amen. And um, we're just excited to, to, have, to come back in fellowship here. Uh, it's important to see you guys, I know. <laughs> <laughs> We've missed you. <laughs> and all of you guys, it's just uh, important. I missed some water here on the floor. Because I thought um, for the first time... I put, do you want to give me some water there? Thanks. For the first time I put water here. Where there is a shelf here, but it has a shelf life. So. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Our brother Peter is going to give us, uh, just going to share something with us. Oh, that's okay. Thanks, Brenda. Good morning. The Lord just impressed something on my heart just now, and I feel that I had to share it with you. You know when, I hope I have my facts right, the prophet Elisha had a servant, Gehazi, and they were surrounded by Assyria's army, and this uh, servant became scared, and he came to Elisha and he said, we are surrounded. And Elisha said, I will ask God to open your eyes to see yes. who is with us. And when they looked, there was an in, uncountable army around them of angels. And I just felt just now, we only a few little people and we praising God and maybe they can't even hear it in the street. But I think we're not aware of hundreds of thousands of angels that are rejoicing mm. with us and if we could hear the total noise of those angels and of us Amen. we would be out of this world today so whenever we praise and whenever some soul comes to God and realizes that he's a sinner there's rejoicing in yes. heaven Amen. and I believe this morning even if we only a few the rejoicing is great. And we had a multitude of angels praising God with us this morning. Amen. That's all I wanted yes. to say. Praise Thank God. You. Amen. Thank God for His presence. Thank God for um, the angels of the Lord encamp around about us and keep us in all our ways. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. As you may see on the board, we're going to speak on the, the, about the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And I'm going to read from the book of... Um, 1 John book of 1 John Matthew, Mark Luke and then skip uh, a lot of books and then go to 1 John <laughs> it's at the end 1 John uh, Esther Johannes Johannes or is it yeah, it is. sorry it's there Here we are. 1 John 4 verse 1. Beloved, uh, Brenda number 2, just uh, slightly down, please. <clears throat> 1 John 4 verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So he identifies that there's a spirit in operation and the voice of the Spirit goes through false prophets, goes through the prophet. The voice of the Spirit of God goes through the prophets of God, goes through the preachers, okay? Declares it. 
So there are many uh, false prophets are gone in, out into the world. Hereby we know the Spirit of God, because every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. The Antichrist does not believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. They will deny it. They will uh, say he is a prophet, but he's not the Son of God. Whereof we have heard that it should come, the spirit of Antichrist, even now already is in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God, and he that knows God hears us. That is not of God, he that is not of God hears us not. Yeah, but we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. There, there are religions that will acknowledge that Jesus uh, lived, but that he's not the Christ. That he's not the Messiah, he's just a prophet. The others that believe that Jesus and the devil are brothers and they had like a conflict. Listen, I don't know what the oak smoked, but let me tell you something. There's, there is a division between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And we need in these days more than ever before, we need to discern what spirit is speaking. What is the motivation spirit and you just have to turn on the TV or look on the internet on the things and you'll see the spirit of error is so arrogant and the, the lying spirit the deceiving spirit and you know the scripture says eventually people because they want to be deceived God will hand them over to deception in other words you want to be deceived go for it the Holy Spirit will no longer turn you back and know the truth. And they believe the lie. And it's so important for us to understand that there is the spirit of truth who is the Holy Spirit and there is the spirit of error. There's two power forces on the earth today operating. Spirit of truth, the spirit of error. And this spirit of error is, is uh, the word um, is plane. It means the fraudulent, deceptive, delusion spirit. And it's, uh, it also comes from the word seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. And today people, remember something, the devil's not going to come with a total counterfeit, a uh, total opposite of God. He's going to come with something very cleverly. Has God said, just you know, doubt, has God said? And then look, there's a doubt. I wonder if really God will answer my prayers. I wonder if really Jesus is the Christ. And that's what the Apostle John uh, spoke about. Um, in John chapter 20 verse 31, his entire book of John, not one John, the entire book of John is this. But these things John wrote, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that believing you might have life through his name, John 20, verse 31. So that's the key. The whole writing of the book of John, if you read from uh, the, the beginning of one, uh, John chapter 1, all the way through to John chapter, the end of the, of the book, John 20, that, that you might believe that Jesus is the Messiah. He is the Messiah. He is the promised Christ. And that he is the Son of God. You see, there's, there's doctrines that say, and uh, religions that say, God is one God and He has no Son. They're liars. Because the whole truth is we need to understand who the Son of God is. Right from the beginning of the book of John, John says, in the beginning, what, ha what happened was who? The Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Jesus Christ is God. And the Word was God. 
and in him is life, and his life is the light of men. So if we don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God, how do we, how do we get born again? How do we get saved? Well, you know, I kind of believe maybe, and there are many roads that lead to, to heaven and to God. That's a lie. And we need to discern that is a lie. If you read the book of 1 John, he talks about, and he tells how many people are liars. And he says, if we sin, if we continue in sin, and uh, we say we have no sin, we're liars. And if you look how many times he talks about the truth and the lie in the scriptures. And it's about time the church divided between truth and error. Between the seducing spirit that uh, has a false prophetic word. Because remember something, people will heap unto themselves teachers because they have itchy ears. Okay, they want to hear what they want to hear. Don't tell them about truth. Don't tell them about repenting. Don't tell them that their names might be removed from the book of life. They don't want to hear that. Just tell us how we're going to make money, how God loves us so much. That doesn't matter what we do, past, present, and future, God forgives us. No, He doesn't. That's not what the Bible says. The Scripture says, if we will confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you don't confess your sin, He's not going to forgive it. As simple as that. We need to understand there's the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. They say, yes, our sins, past, present, and future are taken care of. We don't have to worry about repenting. That's a lie. That's a lie. He has made provision for our past, our present, and our future sins to be forgiven. But when we know that we've done something wrong, when we know that we've done and our, and our hearts condemn us, then we say, Father, forgive me. And confess your sins. It says, then he's faithful just to forgive us. Because we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. <clears throat> so we need to discern the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And that's why John writes and he says that we may know, that we may know how to discern the spirit of truth this is the spirit of error. Which spirit is motivating that person? Not just everyone. You know, there's some big names on uh, internationally that's, that preach the word. That they have a spirit of error. Discern it. Sometimes you look at it and it sounds good. It sounds right. But there's something inside of you. you. You know, the scripture says you need no man to teach you. Nobody. But the anointing that abides in you, what anointing is that? The Holy Spirit. The anointing that abides in you will teach you all things and He will lead you into truth. So in other words, when you hear somebody speaking, teaching the Word, your spirit will bear witness, yes, that's right. If it doesn't, and it doesn't line up with Scripture, and it's just somebody's uh, uh, imagination, be careful. Discern every message that you hear. Discern every message that I preach. Discern it by your spirit. Because you know, there were times in the past that I was angry about something. Not Brenda. Never got angry with Brenda. <laughs> but I was angry about something. Something happened and Lord, why is this happening and why that and why this and why there's no money and why the, all kinds of stuff. And uh, uh, anyway... And then I would get in the pulpit and then preach. That's the wrong spirit. We have to be careful by the spirit which discern the spirit. Discern the spirit of truth. One day I was kind of upset with the church. And we had a Monday was pastor's day. And we just went and relaxed at a, a place called Don for you. And uh, some of you know that in Namibia, just outside of Vintuk, beautiful place. Uh, you can enjoy yourself there. Uh, animals and this. So, and a pastor, a friend of ours, um, who's now gone to be with the Lord, but he was there as well with us. Most of the, and we used to buy a five liter ice cream and finish it. <laughs> and you wonder why people have sugar problems. But anyway, <clears throat> and uh, we never suntan anymore because the first time we suntan, we, the, the, but we got so burnt that the blood came out of our, our legs. Okay? It was horrific. We didn't understand. But I said to, so, the, so this pastor asked me, 
so how's things going you know, in the church? And I said, you know, wah, 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 wah. And I said, ah, oh, the, the people and the this and the that. And, and I transferred an angry spirit. And um, he should have discerned it and blocked it and said, you know what, brother? Now you're speaking trash. You're speaking against the children of God. You shut up right now in Jesus' name. And I would have shut up and repented and said, but anyway, he listened to it because you know what? He wanted to hear someone else agree with him because that was in his heart that, that you know, the church is this and that and the Oaks doing this and we've got problems with this guy and that and just carrying on. About 20 years later, after that, I didn't know, we went to preach there at his church. And afterwards he said to me, he said, you know, I want to tell you something. From that day that you were so angry with the church, from that day I agreed with you and I've never been able to pastor my church. Never. He's always had to bring another pastor in and some okay, that messes the church up and all that. Why? Because I transferred the wrong spirit. The wrong attitude. I transferred a spirit of error. And he accepted it. And he never ever pastored his church. From that day, it was over 35 years that he was pastoring there. And he never pastored his church. He couldn't. Or he was always traveling. Just the moment he's back, he's, he, he books a ticket somewhere else and gets out of there. Because there was the wrong spirit. So we need to understand, discern the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And John chapter 8 verse 31, Jesus said to the Jews which believe on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You see, if you've been brought into bondage by something, then it's not truth. Then there's not truth. If they have all kinds of rituals that you must perform, it's not truth. But who is a liar? John chapter 1 verse 22. And here it is. John declares, who is the liar? It says, who is the uh, liar? But he that denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist. He that denies that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He that denies... That all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Jesus is God. And God in the flesh. Emmanuel. He came. That means God with us. And you see that's the key. That we must believe that Jesus is the Christ. The son of God. And you know I've heard so many guys say. Well you know Jesus never declared himself to be the son of God. Wow. Wow. Well, you haven't read the Bible and you haven't checked it out. And it says, Jesus said himself when he spoke to the Apostle John. And it says in Revelation 2.18, And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, right, <clears throat> these things says the Son of God. That's who he declared he is. He's everything the Bible says he is, and he is the Son of God. <clears throat> Who has eyes like the flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. The spirit of error will deny that Jesus is the Christ. The spirit of error will deny that there's only one way to the Father. If Jesus said it, that's it. He said, no man comes to the Father except by me. That's it. No other way. Not Oprah Winfrey style or whatever else. And, and all the guys that she had on her program and all the false uh, uh, doctrines and religions and ways to God and, and all that kind of stuff. It's a lie. There's either truth or a lie. There is no gray area. There is no shadow of turning with God. There is truth and there's error. And we need to know what the truth is. And in the uh, 1 John, John writes over 30 times, that you may know, that you may know, that you may know that you have eternal life, that you may know the Spirit of God. All of these things that you may know it. Not hope, not like the priest that said to me, no man can know God while well, he hasn't read uh, book of 1 John chapter 1. And then all of a sudden he turned around and says, but, but you know God. I said, yes, I do. 
I've received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. He's forgiven me, washed me, cleansed me. I'm walking in the light that I know. I said, would you like to know God today? He says, I'm, I'm not ready yet. Listen, you've been in the ministry for so many years. You studied for seven years at university. And you studied about God, but you didn't want to know Him. That's something. Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? The Spirit of Truth. The Holy Spirit. The Scripture talks continuously about the Holy Spirit being the Spirit of Truth. He will show you things to come. He will reveal Jesus. He will teach us all things. The Holy Spirit will confirm that Scriptures. Will confirm the Word that it's sound doctrine. That it is of truth. In 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. It says, he that commits sin is of the devil. In other words, that committing continually, continually, and ignoring the repentance. For the devil sins from the, from the beginning. For this purpose was the Son of God manifest. That he might destroy the works of the devil. And it's very important. There is no other way. Here's the spirit of Antichrist. In uh, verse 4. Uh, chapter 1, believe not every spirit. So he that confesses that Jesus is the Christ is of God. He that denies that, you know, it will deny and is not of God, is the spirit of the Antichrist. All right. <clears throat> the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Right throughout the scriptures, we're not going uh, into every one of them. But in 1 John, um, the book of 1 John, the Son of God is mentioned 11 times that Jesus is the Son of God. 11 times. And there's 34 matches. In other words, it was mentioned 34 times just in that small book of 1 John. Why? Because He is the creator of the universe. All things were made by Him. Some translations say they were made through Him. No, they were made by Him. And without him was not anything made that was made. And <clears throat> the word became flesh and did what? Dwelt among us. He took on a body like every one of us. He took on the body through, through the, 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 the birth, through Mary and the word. You see, Mary received the word from the angel Gabriel. And the angel said that this should... This that is born of you will be called the Son of God. That is so important. It is so important that Jesus is declared the Son of God. Because what was the first temptation that came against Jesus? If you are the Son of God, then make these stones. In. You see, that, 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 is, that, that freaks out the spirit of error, because it is the spirit of truth. And he said, if you are the Son of God, but in doubt on who the Son of God is, if you are the Son of God, and that's Jesus Christ, you cannot separate Him from the Son of God. And the moment there comes a division between the two, that's the Antichrist. That's the spirit of Antichrist. And we understand, He <coughs> has spoken in John he speaks of the Son of God 38 times it matches in 18 scriptures. So John's ministry was to declare that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is the Word that became flesh. He is the creator of the universe. And that's where our foundation needs to be on truth and not on error. But if we don't discern between that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God... All other doctrines will fall away. We will not have an assurance. And that's why it's so important to, like I've said so many times, get a King James Bible that you can compare whatever other Bible you have, or an Afrikaans translation, 1953 and 1933, one of those translations. Those are words of truth. The others have errors in it. And it's amazing that the others say, oh, this is not on the oldest doctor, uh, 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 the oldest manuscript. They lie. Because they don't add anything. They don't find anything more in those manuscripts. They're always just taking away, taking away, taking away. 
from the gospel of truth. There's a, is it Ripplinger that wrote that book? Gail Ripplinger. Gail Ripplinger. What is the name? New Age Versions. New Age Versions by Gail Ripplinger. Get yourself a copy if you don't believe me. Get yourself a copy and it shows you the error in all of those doctrines. Why? It's the spirit of error. If Satan can't win you, he will pull a little bit of error, just a little slight, just create doubt in you. And that doubt, you won't have faith. You won't have confidence towards God because you doubt. Will God hear me? Uh, is it real? Is Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God? Or must we wait for another? Or is there other ways to, to God? Is there other journeys? No. There's only one way. And John chapter 1 verse 5, uh, here it is. 1 John 5 verse 10, that's if you can read it. He that believes on the Son of God has the witness, where? Has the witness in himself. If you believe in the Son of God, you have the witness in himself. He that believes not God has made him a liar because he believes not the record that God gave of his Son. It is so vital for us to understand right in the beginning that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Son of God. He is the creator of the universe. And He came to reveal the Father to us. God the Father. He came, Spirit, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit, Jesus the Word, and God the Father. And if you look at the, 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 the Scriptures in 1 John chapter 5, verse 8, the new translations leave it out. And they say this, The late manuscripts of the Vulgate testify in heaven, the Father, the Word. It's the late manuscripts. And these three testify. They are not found in any Greek manuscript before the 14th century. Liars. They are liars. Okay? I'll read that. 1 John chapter, um, chapter 4, verse 8. Is it 1 John? Well, sorry, you're right. 1 John 5 verse 8. Okay. Uh, verse 7 says, For there are three that bear witness in heaven. It's verse 7. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. You see, John declares the Trinity. In the New Translations, they've left it out. They say that's not in the earliest manuscripts. They're liars. They only found those manuscripts uh, of the Alexandrian text much later. Okay? And they, they, they twisted. And the guys who, who took those early t or those texts from the, the Latin Vulgate and the Alexandrian text, those guys, uh, Westcott and Hort, Hort, they translated from those manuscripts, the two guys, they weren't even believers. They were part of uh, 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 spiritualists. They used to have seances. And people believe what they wrote and believe what they interpreted as opposed to what Martin Luther took. And he took the, the, the Texas Receptus, the scriptures. Those are words of truth. So any scripture that you have, and it's interesting to, to look at the um, amplified version because it explains a lot of the Greek words. It's fine. But when you look at some of the new translations, they divert from truth. And I want to ask you a question. If you know those scriptures from the other translations, do you have any authority against the devil when you quote it? Can you even remember it? <clears throat> so, we need to understand. Compare what you see in the new translations with the, 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 the text from the King James Bible. And if you really want to study the scripture, some people don't care. That's fine. It's up to you. But if you really want to study the scripture, go to um, a thing called e Sword And download it from the... You got it there. Okay. The Apple, you can download it. Have you got an Apple? An iPhone? I, uh, uh, I got the... What is it called? The Android. Yeah, Android. And it's Esau it's, it's on Android. Yes, on Android. 
okay, I must do that. Because I, I didn't know it was, I know it was on the iPhone. And you can find every Hebrew and every Greek word. That you, no one can teach you something that is not in the scripture. You go and check it out and you find out what it is. Because why? It says, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needs not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. And if you want to know the truth and rightly divide it. You cannot go without the Esau um, on, on your phone or on the computer or somewhere. Or get the book. I, we, we had two of those. Um, the Every Hebrew and every Greek word. It's, it's this big. Okay. Strong's Concordance. Yes, it's linked to it. Okay, that's it. Yeah. If you want to study the scriptures, do that. If you want to know the truth, the truth will set you free. Study exactly what the Bible says. But Jesus declared himself to be the Son of God. <clears throat> so the first temptation was if you are the Son of God. Revelation 2.18, Jesus said he is the Son of God. Uh, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but, ever, but have everlasting life. So right through the scriptures, there's a number of scriptures, you can check them out. Where Jesus declares himself to be the Son of God. He was crucified because of that statement. Jesus was crucified. They said, tell us plainly. The high priests and the priests and the elders and whatever said, tell us plainly. Are you the Son of God? Because they heard him declare it. But are you now in this uh, court case, are you the Son of God? He says, you say it. That's exactly as you say. I am the son of God. That's what he was declaring. And they said crucify him. Crucify him. Because his blaspheme. That he would equal himself with God. Right through the scriptures. You'll find. When, when Jesus said to Peter. Peter who do men say that I am? And the, the scriptures. Uh, the guys were saying. Oh, some say the prophet Isaiah. This that. And then he said to Peter. Who do you say I am? You are the Christ. The son of the living God. Jesus never rebuked him. When Thomas said, and he said to him, put your hands in, in, in my flesh. Put your hands in my side that you can believe. And when Thomas did that, he said, my God, my God. <clears throat> Jesus never rebuked him because he is God the son. And you see, the spirit of truth will always glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Will always bring us to a point in our lives that Jesus is glorified, not man. Always. The spirit of error who's now in operation more than ever before. That spirit that works in the sons of disobedience is the spirit of error. The prince of the power of the air is at work. And more now than ever, ever before. You know why? The time is very short. And he has to confuse and convince the world of a lie. He has to deceive the nations of the world. That's exactly what he's doing now. Exactly. You cannot believe what they believe. You cannot believe that there's so much darkness that they believe. So much error. They use a small thing and they twist it and twist it and twist it and twist it. Discern the truth. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And anyone that declares otherwise is a liar. That's it. That's what the Bible says. That's what John writes. And he says it and I agree with it. Because we need to be in agreement with the Word of God. We need to be in agreement with God has spoken. So... Jesus is the Son of God, the Spirit of Truth against the Spirit of Error. That big fight. You can't believe uh, on the internet. When you speak truth, they, 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 they kick you off. When you speak a lie and you speak trash, they promote you. Why? Because there's a Spirit of Error in operation with them. So don't think just because... Uh, you are of truth and you know the truth and you know the Lord that everybody's going to accept it those will not accept it who are walking in darkness the, the things that are being exposed now openly what things are do, what people are doing and uh, the demonic forces working through people 
It is incredible. But God wants us to know, discern the spirit of truth against the spirit of error. Be very careful. If it doesn't witness with your spirit, don't be very careful. Just block it right there. If someone gives you a message, if someone says, I've got a prophetic word of you, just hang on. First, make sure that he has credibility or she has credibility in your life to speak that word. And if you're not sure, go to someone that is mature in the word and say, this person has a word for me. Can you discern with me? Because if you receive the spirit of error, that thing takes over immediately. The moment you say, yeah, I think it might be so. I'm telling you that the, the scripture, that, that spirit will hold a person captive. So discern every spirit. Check out every word. Check out the spirit by which people are speaking. Check it out. Make sure it's of God. And God wants us to know this. In these end times, that's what John wanted us, know, us to know. That we can know who's the spirit of error and know who's the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. And he said, you need no man teach you. And the reason was, everybody was a prophet. Everybody was an apostle. Everybody had this and everybody had some word. And they saw angels and all kinds of stuff. And like I saw one woman said, oh no, she saw angel Gabriel and angel Michael. And wow, man, <laughs> thank God I haven't seen any of those guys. But uh, unless God will open it. I mean, how many people, John didn't say, hey, the angel Gabriel came and said, how's it? You know, listen, discern that stuff. Don't listen to that trash. Discern it with the scripture, the word of truth. Because you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. And that's it. Jesus' words are final. You see, some people say, well, why do you write stuff on the, uh, and put scriptures? You know why? I will pass away one day, unless I'm raptured. Okay? And I'll be with the Lord in glory. But His Word will never, ever pass away. And we need to see it is written. Thank God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord. Let's stand. Thank you guys for joining us. It's good to see you guys online. And uh, the, <clears throat> I'm going to put the, the message uh, via online. And maybe you can just send me a message if you want it on email or on um, uh, WhatsApp or because uh, we'll send and send the message to other guys. There, there's there's guys connecting, uh, listening to this to the word because the word is truth. We need to preach truth because that's what sets us free, not our opinions, not our teaching, our learning, our great learnedness. No, it's the word of truth. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the very resurrection power of Jesus. We thank you for the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit, teach us, guide us into all paths of truth and righteousness. Lord, let us be aware of the Holy Spirit and the word of God, that word that abides forever in us. And discern between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error in the name of Jesus. And we are of truth because we know him who's cleansed us, washed us in the precious blood of Jesus. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name.